If you've ever used Webpack before, you know it can be incredibly difficult to get started on a new project. But what if I told you there's a library out there that can do everything that you want Webpack to do, but it only requires you to write one single line of code. In today's video, we're going to be talking about that library, which is called Parcel. So let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos where I simplify the web for you. Now, as you can see, I have the Parcel.js homepage pulled up, which I'm going to have linked in the description below if you want to check it out yourself, look at all the documentation. But essentially, if we scroll down here, you can actually see the main things that Parcel is going to do for us. And the first two that it does is it actually bundles your application for you. So it's going to take all of your JavaScript, your HTML, your CSS, SCSS, any of those different types of files you have, it's going to bundle them up, minify them, and put them into a directory that you can deploy so that you have the most efficient application to deploy to your production environment. Also, the really big thing that Parcel does, which I think is the most important, is it does automatic transforms for you. So essentially, it'll take your SCSS and convert it to CSS. It'll take your modules, JavaScript, and convert it to normal JavaScript. It'll use Babel to transpile your JavaScript so you can use brand new features of JavaScript, and it'll transpile all the way down so that older browsers can actually use it. This is by far the most important thing about Parcel in my opinion. Also, you can set up code splitting if you want to do that. It does hot module replacement, which essentially means that while you're editing your code, it's automatically going to swap that code out in the browser without refreshing it for you. So you can actually see your changes live without refreshing the page every single time and just some basic error logging. But essentially the big thing about Parcel versus Webpack is all of this is automatic. You just download Parcel and it does it all for you. So let me show you how this works inside of an actual application. Here I just have a blank application. And what we're going to do is install Parcel into our application. And to do that, we first need to run npm init so that we can actually get an npm project started up. We can just hit enter a bunch of times to do all the default values. There we go. That's going to give us a package.json file. And next, if we type npm i for install, and we put dash dash save dev because this is only for development. And then we just want to type in here Parcel Bundler. And when we hit enter, this is actually going to download and install Parcel for us onto our system so that we can use it. This might take a little bit, so I'm going to be back with you when this finishes. Now that we have Parcel installed, you'll actually see that we have it in our development dependencies. We have Parcel Bundler. And to get started with Parcel, all we need to do is add some scripts. So up here, let's create a script. We're just going to call it dev because this is going to be for our dev environment. And what we can do in here is we can just put Parcel and then the name of the file we want to actually have as our entry point. In our case, we're going to use an index.html file. So let's just create that now, index.html. And we can just put exclamation point and enter, and that's actually going to load up our HTML for us. And there we go. Next, inside of here, we can actually put in our build script. This is going to be for when we deploy to production. We want to build our application to make it as minified as possible before deploying it. So what this is going to do is it's going to be essentially the same thing. But we're just going to put build in front here. So we're going to say parcel build index.html. And now we can save that. And we can just run that by saying npm run dev, for example. And this is going to set up our development environment. It's going to minify everything for us. And as you can see here in our distribution folder, we have our index.html. Obviously nothing has changed because it's just our normal application, but it does set up a server for us running at localhost 1234. And as you can see, if we pull that up, we get our index.html. Obviously this is blank right now. So let's add some things to it. We can just put this off to the side here. And now what we want to do is we want to open up our index.html file and let's put just a header in there. We'll say h1 is going to be header. And if we save that, you'll see that it automatically rebuilds our distribution folder over here for us, but it doesn't refresh over here. We have to actually manually refresh, but that's okay. Now that we have the basics out of the way for how we need to handle our parcel setup, let's actually look at all the benefits we can get with parcel by just jumping into some JavaScript and some CSS. And the first thing I want to do is actually create a new folder. We're going to call this folder source and we're going to put our index.html inside of here. And we need to change here our path to our index.html inside of our build script. So let's make sure that we change that, save it, come down here. We just want to cancel out of our current build and run our new dev server. So that'll work perfectly fine. As you can see, it's building. And if we refresh over here, you see it's still working just fine. So next, let's create some folders in here. We're going to create a folder, which is going to be for our SCSS. And we're also going to create a folder, which is going to be for our JavaScript. And let's just create a main.scss and also a main.js. And normally, if you wanted to use SAS inside of your application, you would need some kind of compiler to compile it down to CSS. But again, Parcel is going to take care of all that for us. So in here, let's just set the background color to be red. 
And let's make sure that we do this inside of a selector. We're just going to use body, for example. This is going to look just like CSS, which is fine. We save that and we can just import that inside of our JavaScript. So we can just come in here and we can say we want to import from that SCSS folder. We want to get main.scss, just like that. Now we can save that, come inside of our index.html here, and we want to include that script tag. So we want to set a source. The source is going to be from JavaScript main.js. And let's just make sure that we defer this. So now if we save that, you see it's building everything up. It's going to be building everything, installing everything we need. And if we refresh over here, you see we now have a red background on our object instead of just that plain white background. And that's because our CSS is getting converted here. Our SAS is getting converted to CSS and it's coming through this import statement and actually getting imported into our index.html. And we can actually see that by opening up our index.html here. And if we make this a little bit wider, you can see that the first thing it's got is our script tag. And then it also imports our link tag, which is our style sheet for us. And this is actually coming from in here. You can see we have our style sheet with our body, and this is converted to normal CSS from the SCSS syntax. And same thing with our JavaScript down here. It has all the extra parcel stuff inside of it. So now what we can do is also look at how we can do imports. So let's create another file inside of here, and we can just call this func.js. And this is just going to export default a function. And this function, all it's going to do is just say console.log hi. There we go. And now instead of main, what we can do is we can import that. So we can say import func from dot slash func, just like that. And we can just call that function. So we can just say func. We can save that. And if we inspect this over here, go over to our console, you can see that we get hi being printed out. And if we look up in here, we're seeing that we're only importing that one main JS. And as you can see already, Parcel takes all of that manual configuration that you need to do in Webpack, and it just does it automatically for you. And all you need to do is just run that dev script in order to have Parcel automatically recompile all of your assets every time you make a change so that you can view them in the web over here. And that's it. It's really as simple as that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos, which are linked over here, and subscribe to the channel for more videos where I simplify the web for you. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.